Welcome to the Predictive Analytics Regression and Classification course. In this lecture, we are going to discuss how a categorical variable as predictor is going to play in the linear model setup. And typically these models are sometimes called ANOVA and in a special case it's called ANOVA but uh, overall it is part of the linear model setups and regression uh, also is part of the linear model setup. First, we will consider uh, an experiment. So suppose an experiment is performed to assess the relative effect of three toxins and a control on, a, on the liver of a certain species of trout. Trout is a particular fish of particular species and the effect of toxin on that particular fish that is being studied. There are about uh, amounts of deterioration of the in standard units of the liver in each sacrificed fish. So you can see there are three toxin levels, time of toxin, toxin 1, toxin 2 and toxin 3. And then there is a control group where no toxin is being given and the level of deterioration of the liver condition is being studied. So there are four in each group there are four uh, fishes I mean egg, uh, specimens. So total there are 16 observation like in each group there are four. So there are four groups three treatment group and one control groups. Now we want to develop a model which will affect the treatment effect. So what the simple model that we can think of that YIJ, I stands for ith group. In this case, I equal to 1 to K, but K will be for our case is 4 because we have 4 groups. And J, J runs for within a group how many samples we have. Here we have in each group we have 4 samples, that, but you can have different number of samples, so that's why j runs from 1 to up to ni, ni is the number of samples in the ith group. So the model that we are thinking is yij equal to theta i plus epsilon ij where expectation of epsilon ij is 0 and variance of epsilon ij is sigma i square for where sigma i square finite and covariance of epsilon i j and epsilon i dash j dash is 0. So that means basically we are assuming that each uh, there is no correlation between each of the uh, samples. Each of the samples are independent. If you assume that then governance of epsilon i j and epsilon i dash j dash will be 0. So little bit more clarification of the model. We can take sigma i squared to be different. <coughs> we can take sigma i squared to be different, but for simplicity, we are assuming sigma i squared is equal to sigma squared for all groups. So all group has the similar variance. So this assumption is called homoscedasticity assumption. And then we assume that epsilon i j is following normal distribution with mean at 0 and variance sigma square. So this is the model setup that we are going to work out. So this is the from the model we are framing from the experiment we are framing the model. Now as we frame the model question is can we express this model into linear model form like y equal to x beta plus epsilon. Then we will have an analytic solution of the above model. I mean this model will have an analytic solution. So first we have to define the X matrix or the design matrix. So we have 16 observation for you can see there. So we have 16 rows. 
Yeah, each the first four rows of my data belongs to toxin group one, and rest of the places called toxin two. For the toxin two, I created zeros. Toxin three, I created zero, and the control group zeros. Similarly, the from row five to row eight, I have toxin group all ones. Toxin two goes to one, then three is zero, and control group from row five to row eight is zero. This is called um, dummy creation of dummy variable in statistics in machine learning often it is called one hot encoding this is very useful this one hot encoding is very useful solving many problems and we will see soon how it is going to make our life very simple <coughs> so we have 16 rows for each samples we have one representation and if it goes to toxin one we have one if it not if a particular row does not belong to that group then that row will get zero all the observations are stacked over another the first four row observations are belongs to toxin one uh, from five to eight observation number five to eight belongs to toxin group two from eight to twelve belongs to toxin group 3 and from 12, 13 to 16 it group belongs to control group. Then we calculated x transpose x. Turns out x transpose x in this case become very simple. If you go back to the x what happens is x transpose x is essentially it x transpose is kind of you know when it is first row first column will be just it's with itself so it will have create a 4 and then 0 0 0 in this way the x transpose x creates this matrix so x transpose x inverse is very simple just diagonals will be 1 out of 4 and the half diagonals are all 0 so this is simple solution now we calculate x transpose y x transpose y is if you look at carefully that sum of the first group of observations the second of element is the sum of the second group of observation and third is the third group of observation and fourth is the fourth group of observation fourth element hence the solution is x transpose x inverse x transpose y x transpose x inverse is all diagonal elements is 1 by 4 and off diagonals are 0. So my beta hat is basically sample group mean y1 bar of the, of the, of the first group. Similarly second so y2 bar is the sample group mean of the second group or the toxin group 2. y3 bar stands for the y sample mean for the group 3 in this case toxin 3 and y4 bar is the sample mean of the control group so model yields group means group sample means as the solution for theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and theta 4 so this is very interesting solution now i am posing a question to you guys ask yourself how to model global mean the above experiment is to be modeled as is being modeled as yij equal to theta i plus epsilon ij where i equal to 1 to k and j runs from 1 to n i where each theta i is the group mean we, we realize that each of the theta i is the group mean but how can we model a global mean for the old all data so we also want to incorporate global mean for all data in this case situation i would like you to take a pause pause your video here 
for about 10 minutes think about it and try for yourself to develop the model with global me i believe you have now got a possible solution let us see how can you solve the solution get a solution if one possible solution is you take y i j equal to mu mu is the sort of a global mean plus theta i theta i are the group means plus some epsilon i j now i equal to runs to 1 to k and j equal to 1 to n i this is a simple solution looks like but we are going to face a problem can you identify the problem so again i will request you to pause the video for a while and think about maybe for 10 minutes that what problem you are going to face this particular model i believe now you have prob you have got the idea that what problem you are going to solve you are going to face and let us we know that in this case our response vector will still be same the change we will see if you look into the model our response vector will going to be same the only change that we are going to see is in the design matrix <coughs> so the change is that whatever design matrix we have had before that same design matrix we are still going to have but now what is what we will have is we are going to have a fifth column called intercept <coughs> okay so we are going to have a intercept column now this is an interesting phenomena that if we have this design matrix then our x transpose x matrix is going to be 164444 and then 44000 then 404000 400040400004 in this matrix if you look at very carefully the first column of this x transpose x is actually direct sum of second column third column fourth column and fifth column so if you just add the second column third column fourth column and fifth column you will get the first column back so the first column is completely dependent on the second third fourth and fifth column so that means x transpose x is not going to be invertible that means solution does not exist if we create a dummy variable for each labels of categorical variable i hope you understand the problem let me repeat we can let me go back to the model in this model what we have we have only effectively one predictor predictor is treatment and there are four possible labels of the treatment toxin 1 toxin 2 toxin 3 and control so for each labels of the treatment so there is only one predictor that is treatment in treatment level there are four possible labels so one categorical variable with four labels toxin 1 toxin 2 toxin 3 and to control group for each label if you create a if you create a for each label you create a dummy variable or one hot encoding then what happens if and also you keep uh, intercept parameters then the in the x matrix the intercept parameter becomes completely dependent on all the columns of your predictor variables as a result one column will become completely dependent on some other columns and hence we will not be 
going to we are not going to have uh, invertible matrix or going to have an analytical solution at all for this case we will solution does not exist so you have to be very careful about when you are going to handle categorical variables with different levels let us stop here and we'll continue on the next part Thank you.